Think Big Think Expansion. Robert's View. One of Donald Trump's signature trademarks is the talk he gives on thinking big. He definitely practices what he preaches. If you have any doubt about his ability to think big, all you need to do is go to New York City and count the number of skyscrapers with his name on them. I have had the privilege of listening to his talk on thinking big, and each time he throws in something new and expands my own thinking. If you ever have the chance to hear his think big talk, grab the opportunity. If you can hear it more than once, keep taking the opportunity. Even though my rich dad did not talk about thinking big, he taught us the same concept. Instead, the words he often used were leverage and expansion. The American industrialist, Andrew Carnegie, born into poverty in Scotland in the 19th century, Carnegie immigrated to the United States as a young man and began working as a telegraph operator. Despite his humble beginnings, Carnegie had a vision for himself and his future. He saw the potential for growth and innovation in the steel industry, and he was determined to make his mark. When he taught his son and me to think about the differences between leverage and expansion, he used the McDonald's franchise as a teaching example. He would say, when Ray Kroc bought McDonald's from the McDonald brothers, he leveraged himself. When he franchised McDonald's, he expanded his leverage. Andrew Carnegie When Ray Kroc purchased the hamburger stand, he leveraged himself because the burger business could make money with or without him. And this is where most S-quadrant business owners stop, keeping their businesses small. When Ray Kroc developed a franchise system for the small business, he expanded the hamburger business into the B quadrant. You may notice I used the words franchise system, the key word being system. In Before You Quit Your Job, written for entrepreneurs, I write extensively about the BI triangle. The BI triangle is the diagram my rich dad used to focus my thinking and to teach me about the eight parts that make up a business. Statistics show that nine out of 10 startup businesses fail in the first five years. And of the one that survives, again, nine out of 10 of the survivors fail by the 10th year. Again, notice the 90 over 10 rule. Many entrepreneurs fail simply because one or more of the eight pieces of the BI triangle is weak or non-existent. Whenever I look at a struggling business, I use the BI triangle as an analytical reference. The BI triangle refers to the three key components of a successful business, business acumen, leadership, and personal development. If any one of these components is weak, the business is likely to struggle and potentially fail. The statistics mentioned, where nine out of 10 startups fail within the first five years, and a similar rate of survivors fail by the 10th year, highlights the importance of having a strong BI triangle. The 90 over 10 rule is a reminder that success in business is not guaranteed, and it takes more than just a good idea or product to make a business thrive. It is crucial for entrepreneurs to have a solid understanding of business acumen, which involves having a deep understanding of the market, competitors, finances, and operations. A strong leader must be able to guide the business and make informed decisions, while personal development is essential for maintaining the drive and motivation necessary to succeed. By focusing on these three key components, entrepreneurs can increase the chances of success for their businesses and avoid becoming part of the 9 out of 10 failures. The BI Triangle is a useful tool for analyzing a business and determining its strengths and weaknesses, helping entrepreneurs make informed decisions and improve their chances of success. Notice that the word product is used to label the smallest section, and the word mission is one of the largest sections, and the foundation for the triangle. This is because the product is the least important item of the BI triangle, and the mission is the most important. Too many times, I meet a wannabe entrepreneur who says to me, I have an idea for a great new product. I often respond by asking, so, what is your mission? More often than not, the reply is, well, to make money. In most instances, the business has little chance of survival. The mission is the most important part of the business. It is the spirit of the business. It is the heart of the business. Without spirit and heart, most entrepreneurs will not make it, simply because the road ahead is a hard one. The world is filled with great products that fail. The products fail simply because they do not have the power of the BI triangle behind them. When you study most successful businesses, you will most likely find a complete and vibrant BI triangle in action. A great business will have a strong mission. Great leadership, a competent team of managers who work well together, excellent cash flow and financing, clear and effective sales and marketing communications, systems that work efficiently, clear and tight legal documents and agreements, and, of course, a great product. Most of us can cook a better hamburger than McDonald's, but few of us can build a better business system than McDonald's. Which brings us to the word systems again. 
one of the biggest differences between an S quadrant business owner and a B quadrant business owner is systems. Typically, the S quadrant business owner is the system, which is why he or she cannot expand. McDonald's is a system-dependent business, meaning that it relies heavily on established systems and processes, rather than relying on individual people. This allows McDonald's to maintain a consistent level of quality and consistency across all of its locations, regardless of who is working there. The systems are designed to be able to be run by people with only high school education, meaning that McDonald's can maintain the same level of quality with less experienced workers. Additionally, this system-dependent approach allows McDonald's to scale quickly and easily, without having to rely on experienced employees. Many businesses are staffed by highly educated and highly paid people, yet they are failing to produce results. This is because these businesses focus too much on the people and not enough on developing effective systems. Without a well design system, a team of highly paid individuals will not be able to reach their full potential. It is important for businesses to create systems that are capable of achieving the desired results, even without the input of highly paid people. What is the difference between an entrepreneur and a CEO? Making it as simple as possible, an entrepreneur is like a person who builds great race cars. A CEO is like the driver of a race car. If you have a great race car driver, but a poorly built race car, the great CEO will lose every race. Rarely, you will find entrepreneurs who are great CEOs. Donald Trump is one of those people. So are Bill Gates, Michael Dell and Steve Jobs. These men can build great race cars and drive them. In the Rich Dad Company, we have three CEOs and three race car builders in Kim, Sharon and I. Sharon is excellent at both building and driving the race car. Kim and I are better at driving, but we do build parts of the car. I often say that I am the horn of the Rich Dad company and Sharon is the engine. I would definitely say Rich Dad is a team enterprise. The mission is the most important part of the business. It is the spirit of the business. It is the heart of the business. Without spirit and heart, most entrepreneurs will not make it, simply because the road ahead is a hard one. Robert Kiyosaki In summary, I have met many people who have become very rich in the S quadrant. Many are small business owners who are excellent builders and drivers of small businesses. There are also ES and SS who become very rich attaching themselves to B quadrant businesses. For example, Tiger Woods is an S and in his case, S stands for superstar as well as self-employed or specialist. But much of his wealth comes from his endorsements of B quadrant businesses. The same is true with some movie stars. They are in the S quadrant, but associate with B quadrant businesses such as Sony or Warner Bros. Donald says, think big, and he builds giant buildings and mega hit television shows. My rich dad said to expand, and he meant expanding the way McDonald's did. Both are forms of thinking big and expanding. Are you beginning to understand why the 90 over 10 rule of money works? The 10% who make 90% of the money do the things that 90% of the other people do not do. Donald's View Think expansively Robert Kiyosaki's explanation of think big, think expansion is insightful and spot on. However, let's take it one step further. Rather than just thinking big, let's think expansively. To entrepreneurs, this means having the vision to see what is possible and making it a reality. Entrepreneurs see the potential in an idea, and they have the drive and the determination to make it happen. The rest of the world looks on in awe, admiring their innovation. Recently, I came across an article that credited me with an innovation. Needless to say, I was surprised, as I had never considered it to be anything other than a way to combine two elements that I thought might work well together. Years ago, when I was working on the Trump International Hotel and Tower at 1 Central Park West, which was previously the Gulf Western Building, I decided to try something different and combine a hotel and condominium in one. It ended up being an incredible success and has been replicated by me and many others since then. This just goes to show that innovation is often the result of combining simple ideas with out-of-the-box thinking. It is a form of creativity, but it is more about putting together existing ideas in a new way than anything else. Innovation often results from combining simple ideas with creative and unconventional thinking. For example, Apple's iPod was created by taking existing technologies like the hard drive and MP3 player and combining them in a unique way to create a revolutionary product. Similarly, 3D printing technology was created by combining existing technologies such as computer-aided design or CAD, 3D modeling, and laser sintering. 
By combining seemingly simple ideas in unique ways, we can create revolutionary products and services that can have a huge impact on the world. I owe my success with my hotel and tower project to my own creativity and out-of-the-box thinking. It may seem far-fetched to compare classical music composition with real estate development, but on closer inspection, you will find that they actually have a lot in common. Someone once said that my life was like a grand opera. This intrigued me, so I decided to research more about operas and discovered that they began in Greece before being popularized later in Florence, with the first opera being performed in Venice. Considering the sound level in my office sometimes, and since I don't use intercoms, I can relate to opera in that sense. And since I've studied the Greeks, I can get that part too. So I figure when the Greek influence intersected with the music being written in the 17th century in Italy, this art form was bound to happen. Some things take centuries to evolve. I'm still evolving, so I'm pleased to be considered operatic, although sitting through an opera is something I just can't do. It just can't compete with baseball in my book. But I've always believed that you can respect something without having to embrace it. Beethoven was another groundbreaker. He blew people away when he decided to add voices to his massive Ninth Symphony. We all know the Ode to Joy at this point, and can't imagine this work without it, but back then it was considered to be innovative. It was a sensation, and it didn't happen overnight. He made sketches for this symphony in 1811, and the work premiered in 1824. Those ideas were developing for 13 years. I would say Beethoven had been thinking big for a while. Thinking expansively is just another way to innovate. Sometimes I ask myself, what else can I include in my thought process to make it more comprehensive? Is there anything I can add that might enhance the project or idea I've got spinning around in my head? Many times I will tell myself that something isn't quite right yet, because that automatically opens the door for more ideas to surface and enter in. I ask myself, what am I not seeing? What else is possible? Sometimes the answers wind up being innovative ideas. It's not necessarily some secret process, but it is a process and it requires concentration. Robert, Kim and Sharon recently visited me at my golf course in California. I shared another chair story with them. My club has a beautiful ballroom, overlooking the Pacific Ocean in the number one golf course in California, but the club held less than 300 people. We were unable to accommodate many events, such as weddings, because our capacity was too small, so my management team's answer was to enlarge the building. They came to me with plans to remodel and expand the ballroom, which would take millions of dollars and lots of time. We would have had to go through the permitting process and close for many months during construction, thus losing millions of dollars in business revenue, on top of spending millions of dollars to remodel. As we were standing together looking around the ballroom, noticed a woman having trouble getting out of her chair. The chair was very large, and she had trouble moving it away from the table so she could stand up. In fact, the room was filled with these huge chairs. I had an immediate vision. We needed new chairs, smaller chairs. This one idea not only saved me millions of dollars, it even made me money. We made more money on selling the old chairs than it cost me to buy the new gold Chivari chairs. We are now able to seat more than 440 people comfortably and have increased the number of larger events we host as well as the revenue we receive. No expansion of the building was necessary and we had no downtime. So I turned what could have cost me millions into a profit. That's the first step to visionary status, seeing something and knowing it could be different or better. As I've said before, learn your lessons from as many sources as you can. Think and learn expansively. It won't be expensive, but it can give you some big returns. Thinking expansively includes seeing what is possible and making it happen. Donald Trump Think creatively and then leverage that creativity. Are you comfortable in the world you live in? Try imagining expanding your world to include new adventures, new friends and new places. As you expose yourself to new experiences, you will generate new ideas. You will see new problems that you can find solutions to. And you will see how to use those solutions in many ways to serve many other people. This all comes from expanding your world and your vision. Think and live bigger. Putting aside any fear of risk. What do you envision? What is one area in your life where you could think bigger? Name that big thought. What are you going to do about it? See you in next video.